Okay, good evening, everyone. Good evening, good evening, good evening. You are welcome to the uh, final session of Skill Upgrade 2.0. Uh, it's been an awesome experience in the last uh, uh, four days, and today we are bringing it to an end with this amazing session. So first and foremost, I would like, uh, I want to be sure if you can see me and hear me, that is very important. So if you can see me and hear me, just let me know in the comments uh, that you can hear me and you can see me, that's very important. So we can uh, go right in. Our speaker for tonight is ready. It's ready to uh, give us loads of value. Great, I can see two people have joined. So if you can see me and you can hear me, just let me know in the comment section so we can start right away. I'm very sorry for starting this uh, late. I apologize. I was trying to do some uh, few things at the back end. So let me know if you can see me and you can hear me. And let me know how excited you have for tonight's session. In the final day, the first day you learned about life skills. Uh, the second day you learned about um, leadership skills. And yesterday we learned about we learned about uh, digital, digital skills, yes. And the first junior took us on a great uh, session yesterday. And I'm sure you learned a lot. And today we'll be learning about entrepreneurship skills. You'll be learning how to start. Okay, great. Precious is saying she can see me here. And I'm sure you can hear me too. That's great. So today we'll be learning about uh, entrep uh, entrepreneurship skills. And you'll be learning how you can start and grow a profitable business. Uh, I was checking the statistics some, uh, some days ago, and I saw that over 40% of 40% of uh, youths are unemployed, about 40%. That's really staggering. And uh, it's the desire of many people to really do great things with their lives, but sometimes they need the skills to be able to do that. And today we'll be learning about entrepreneurship skills and how we can start and grow business. So sometimes you don't have to just wait, uh, join uh, the, the battalion of people seeking for jobs. You can become someone that starts creating jobs. Uh, and then we start employing people, yes. And there's no, uh, it's not really that uh, an, uh, a clear task to do. So this evening you'll be learning how to go about it, how you can start a business. As a young person, how, how you can start a business and start working towards building and growing it to become profitable. So uh, without wasting time, I'll be reading the bio of our speaker for tonight. But let me bring him on board first. So, uh, Give me a few seconds. All right, so we are still waiting for a few people to join us. So, uh, Precious, can you let me know where you are joining us from? Where are you joining us from? Where are you joining us from? If you are joining, let me know uh, where you are joining us from. And uh, let me know how excited you are for tonight's session. Let me know how excited you are for tonight's session. We'll be learning how to start and grow business. And I know many people love they be learning about business, but many businesses fail. Many businesses fail. But this evening, we'll be learning the skills involved. It's not enough to desire something. You must gain knowledge about how to go about doing whatever you desire. You must gain knowledge about it. So let me know where you are watching from. Let me know where you are joining us from. If you can see this, you can hear me. Let me know where you are joining us from. Let me know where you are joining us from. Let me know where you're joining us from. And if you have friends and loved ones that you think will benefit because they are going to benefit from tonight's session, just share the link with them. Share the link with them. Don't uh, enjoy alone. Don't enjoy it. There's love in sharing. Share the link with them. They'll be a part of this too. They'll be a part of this. All right, without wasting time, I'll just go ahead and uh, invite our speaker for tonight. Good evening, sir. Hi everyone. Good evening. Yes, good evening, evening Mordecai. You know, every time, every time I read your name, I smile because um, I think it's uh, how do I put it? It's a very interesting name, but not everybody bears the name commonly, so it makes me laugh sometimes. Wow. But yeah, um, it's great to be here. Good evening, everyone. Uh, this uh, equity, uh, Victor, Victor, say I'm joining from Woody Potakot. Hey, my Pitakwa Pese, how you did now? <laughs> anyway, thank you for having me here. Thank you. It's an honor to be here. I just 
pray. I don't know where you're watching from around the world. We still have challenge in, Af in Nigeria somehow with the telecommunication services. So the network has been playing around, but I just hope that it, it takes us safely till the end tonight. Yes, All right, so before you go, I, let me just read your uh, bio. Although we've posted it on the group, but I want everybody to just, uh, in case they didn't read it, so they just know about a little about you. Can you hear me, sir? Yes, very well. All right, so uh, our speaker for tonight, uh, Kisley Ime. I don't know if I got the pronunciation, Ime. Ime? Ime, okay. Kisley Ime is yes. a business development consultant, a highly sought after inspirational speaker, is a success coach and an astute dynamic corporate trainer. Uh, Kisley focuses on providing guidance and coaching for individuals who have fears or lack clarity on ways to start their profitable businesses and achieve success in their life and career. Uh, by training, Kisling is a graduate of business admin and management, and has also been trained by the US Consulate to Nigeria on helping entrepreneurs at their business. He's a member of the Young African Leaders Network, that's Yali Network. He holds an advanced diploma in- uh, Nepa, I don't want to green light. Let me do my session, blackout. He holds an advanced diploma in leadership and organization management from Daystar Leadership Academy and uh, is the host of the Profitable Business Masterclass and many other great things he's doing. And this evening, uh, we have him tonight and he'll be sharing to us how to start and uh, grow, uh, uh, start and grow a profitable business. So, uh, okay, precious, you're joining from. So let us, great, great, great. You can see his handsome face. Thank you, sir. And I want to first appreciate you for, <laughs> I want to appreciate you for uh, accepting to do this. I really appreciate. I do not take this for granted. I know you are very, uh, you are a very busy person. And currently, is in Abuja for a program. Still, is still a, a created time to join us this evening. So I really appreciate you, sir. So in the comment section, everybody say thank you, sir, for joining us this evening. It's really appreciated. So uh, you can go ahead, sir. All right, everyone. Good evening. Um, good evening from Nigeria. I don't know where, from wherever part of the world you're watching from. I think it's funny that you probably be seeing that Kingsley doing a video in a dark back room. Uh, I would at some point turn off the camera, but I just wanted a few of you to probably see my face. I know that when we do virtual trainings, um, the connection of the face and the eyes is very important, especially when we're not in the same room together. But um, it's my own way of showing resilience. Entrepreneurship is not rosy. It's sweet when we're talking it. It's nice when we're analyzing it. But when you, when the rubber hits the road, like some day me would say, you would realize that it's not rosy. It's not all sweet and tush. Sometimes you have to be resilient. It's funny how if you're, if you don't, I'm, I'm holding it, I'm holding, oh my God. I know that some people are going to watch the replay and they are going to laugh, but I want to use this as an example, right? I'm holding a touch to my face just so that you could see my face, right? Um, but uh, that is to tell you that entrepreneurship is your readiness to be innovative, to be creative, to be determined, to do whatever it takes to ensure that your product is in the market, that you, you fight the competition by that. Of course, I mean, when I mean fight, it's not like, uh, kill somebody, but be determined to do whatever it takes to ensure that your product gets into the right customers that you want them to. Right? Uh, I, I'm some. I'm here in Abuja. We I came in for the yeah, Youth Model African Union Summit, and then we just finished. And uh, I would have turned this down when Madakai asked me to speak, knowing that today is like the last day of my being in Abuja. But I felt like every time we talk about entrepreneurship, I'm always excited. I'm excited because unfortunately, entrepreneurship is taught in several schools by people who are not entrepreneurs. So there's always going to be a difference in ways with which they teach. I remember when I was in, 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 the, in the tertiary institution uh, studying business admin, my lecturer told, me, told us to our face that she doesn't like business, but she was teaching us entrepreneurship. And we asked her why she said, because it's too risky. So you could see that someone who's not applying or practicing the trade teaching you, you can imagine how that would be. So uh, I have been privileged by God to be one of the people that practice and is an entrepreneur as well as a, as a consultant. But 
because of that, but because of that, um, so guys, just permit me. I am. Um, let me get into my study so that I can I can just stay in and continue. I'm sorry, guys. Uh, okay, still so I'm back now. Yeah. All right. So um, entrepreneurship is what is entrepreneurship? Entrepreneurship is an individual choosing to take the risk and do whatever it takes to ensure that the problem is being turned into a product and a solution that will be spread in the market for other people to take advantage of it. So an entrepreneur is someone who's very risky in nature. Okay, so everybody sees a problem, but an entrepreneur is thinking of what is the solution out of this problem. And it takes the risk to try to solve the, this, uh, create the solution to the problem. And then goes for that to uh, take that solution and package it in form of a product and in form of a service. And you know, packaging it in form of a product and a service is not something that is cheap, it's not something that is free, it's something that takes money with the risk not being sure if what he has packaged will be bought. And, and even if it is bought, he will make profit from it or not. So, uh, but however, entrepreneurship is the way to go in Africa. It's the way to go in Nigeria. And as young people, it's important that we begin to en embrace entrepreneurship. Someone might ask me, but why, sir? I tell you of a quick truth, um, using Nigeria as a case study. The federal government, uh, by the person of the president of Mohamed Buhari, said last year, if I'm not mistaken, I think last year or early this year, that the federal government don't have any jobs. And it was being plain and truthful that federal government don't have any jobs, even though that was not something to be proud of. Federal government is not supposed to say they don't have jobs. But that's the reality. There's no job out there, right? So the best, but there are several problems out there. You know, there are, there are no jobs, but there are several problems which means there are several opportunities with which these problems can be turned into solutions and provided as a service and as a product. And once that is done, you begin to you know, make profit from it. So, so guys, my name is King Slime again. Uh, let me know if you're following on the comment section, uh, just types uh, we're following or I'm following, or if you're getting any ideas of what I'm saying, just let me know in the comment section. I have refrained from saying, are you getting value? Because uh, people over time are abusing the word value, right? So I don't always get excited when people say, oh, I got value. No, it's not. I don't want you to get value. I want you to get practicable uh, points and nuggets that you will take action from. I want you to take action with what you've heard. You don't necessarily have to take action in all the points, probably just one or two, and you take action and apply and implement it and you see results. So I'm, I'm waiting at the comment session to see, and I'm sure Madekai is going to be uh, displaying your, your comment or, uh, on the screen, so I, I know you are following. I just want to be sure that I'm not talking alone, right? So while I'm waiting for you, I've been asked to talk about uh, starting and growing a business, and, but somehow I just felt like I should start by talking about uh, skills to develop as an entrepreneur, skills that you can develop and help your entrepreneurship journey. I just feel like I should start from talking from there, right? So uh, like he was trying to read my, my bio. You might want to go back and read through it. It's a very long bio and I'm very proud of it. Uh, we've been on this journey for quite a while. Yes, we've been on this journey for quite a while. Yes, I can read. Um, uh, what the guy said, I'm following. Great. Who else is following? Please type so we know. I've been on this journey for quite a while and I can tell you that I've had several experiences. I still look forward to more experiences. But part of the experience I've realized is that there are basic entrepreneurship skills you should begin to develop when you begin to think of uh, going into the line of business, right? That's connecting to why I said many of us should begin to tear towards entrepreneurship. By that, I mean thinking of how to start our business. Business is simply solving people's problems for a fee. That's what business is solving people's problem for a fee. Every business you see today is solving a problem. I'm holding a light to my face so that you can see my face. Now the person that designed these products that were able to, to put a light on my face designed it in such a way that in darkness, I could use the light, right, to see my way, whether in the room or in the office or wherever I find myself. Now that person didn't design it for free. After designing it, you put a fee to it. Oh, yeah, finally we got light. 
All right, so we've got like so um I'm going to now have to uh I'm going to have to shut this one down. Just give me a second. Great, so I'm off now. All right. So you can see the difference with <laughs> the normal lights and these other lights, right? So so like like I was saying, uh okay, so let me see which side will be brighter. Oh, okay. I think this is um, I'm trying to see which way is gonna be better for you guys to see my face. It's still dark, but I, I hope that you can just manage it with that. All right. So, so as an entrepreneur, oh man, what did I do? <laughs> okay. So as an entrepreneur, number one skill you must develop when you begin to think of the journey of entrepreneurship is you must develop mar marketing skills. Uh, you cannot be a better entrepreneur if you're not a good marketer. Now, you don't have to be an excellent marketer, but you need to develop the skill, the ability to sell. I say always again and again, marketing and sales is a very critical skill that everybody should develop, whether you are into business or you are not into business. You should learn how to sell because if you know how to sell, you will never be broke and you will never be out of job. Every organization you are seeing out there are looking for people to market their products. They are looking for people to sell their product for them. Give it to mama for me. They're they are looking for people to sell their product for them. And if you could sell very well, then you are sure of getting commission for selling that particular product. They don't even need to ask of your CV. You don't even need to ask where did you study, which school did you study from. Of what essence is someone who studied marketing but cannot market or make a sale? And then the person who did not study marketing yet is making sales. If you're a business owner, who will you employ? Of course, you're going to employ the person who um, you're going to employ the person who is able to make sales for you, right? So one of the skills you should develop as far as business is concerned, entrepreneurship is concerned, is sales and marketing. The number two skills you should develop is communication skills because you must find a way to learn how to communicate. Some people say, oh, oh, I don't like, I don't know how to talk. No, you can't say that in this century. In the 21st century that we are in, in this Gen Z, you must learn how to communicate because um, businesses thrive on the premises of ideas, right? So as a business owner, you'll be able to communicate your idea effectively such that those who you're targeted to communicate to will be able to understand and assimilate what you're saying. One, number two, so that they will be able to understand the vision. So imagine you have a vision to start a business where you want to do X, Y, Z products, and then um, you don't know how to communicate that to the people that should be working with you. How are you going to be able to move further on that line of your goal? So number two, very keen and important goal that you have uh, to learn as far as your skills is concerned for entrepreneurship is communication skills. I said number one, what? Marketing. Right, and I said marketing is your ability to create awareness, to create um, to create awareness, make constructive noise, to draw attention of your potential customers to be aware and be interested in the products that you want them to buy. That's marketing. Sales is converting that, that interest into them bringing out money from their pocket to buy. Do you understand that? So number two, I said communication. Communication is your ability to uh, to to send a message in a clear and audible way that your receiver of the message is able to understand the objective and the purpose of the message at the end of the day. So you must learn to communicate. Don't say English is not my, my, not be my papa language. I'm using pidgin right now. So don't, don't say, oh, English is not my papa language. I beg, I beg, I beg. No, you can't say that. You know why? Because we're in the borderless world today. You are no longer competing with the guy in a bar alone. You're no longer competing with the guy selling in, in Ibada. You're no longer competing with the guy selling at Ojota market. You are competing with the, another guy in Australia who is manufacturing and producing the same product you intend or you are producing or he's selling the same services you're selling. I'll give you a typical example. If you're, um, if you're on this call right now and you are, you are producing, let's say, bags, right? You're producing bags. Your competitor is not just the person that is producing bag as well. Your competitor is Gucci. Your competitor is Louis Vuitton. Because, I mean, because um, people leave you, your neighbors in your street go on Jumia. They go on Ali Express. They go on, where again, Amazon. And they order the bag that you are also making. Why didn't they buy from you? They went to someone who's far away in Beijing. 
so in Beijing or in Belgium or in Australia, but showcase their product on Amazon and they bought from them, not you. That's because right now people don't care who you are and where you're from. They are interested in buying products that will serve the purpose for which they were buying it. So you don't play local anymore. So don't always say, don't allow anybody. If I don't join that bandwagon to say, oh, English is in Papa language. No, learn it because you might need it. Whatever means of communication that will help you become significant in the marketplace and get your ideas ac across, you must be able to learn that, okay? So in communications, is a three-way thing. You communicate how you communicate with your customers or your potential customers. You could be selling jollof rice, but the way you are presenting the jollof rice in communication is as if you are telling them that you are selling uh, ijabogari. And if someone is hungry and wanted to eat jollof rice, but because your communication is telling, is making them assume that what you're selling is ijabogari, they will pass you by. So marketing, you can't market effectively well if you don't, um, if you don't know how to communicate, right? So I've buttressed another point on communication. Uh, the next point you need in entrepreneurship, the next point you need is problem solving skills. Problem solving skills, that is actually the foundation for starting a business. You cannot start a business if you don't know how to solve problems. Solving problems must become your, your, your part of your desire. So I know some of us here, we did not grow up with that addiction or that, no, no, let me not use addiction. I refer from that one. We did not grow up with the habit and the character of solving problems. But we, it's, it's something you must learn. Don't, if you are somebody that always dodge solving problems, then you will never go far in life. I promise you, you won't go far. Because when the chips are down, it is those who know how to solve problems that will become relevant at any sphere with which you find yourself. So uh, the third entrepreneurship skills you should develop is problem solving skills. Problem solving starts from in your home. Maybe they, maybe they, you, you, they, they, they are dishes in the kitchen that is dirty. Yes, you are not the one that eats the, the and, and, and you know, drop the unclean dishes. But because you have a problem solving skills, you came in and you, you believe that that's not how, how the kitchen should be. It should be, it should be kept tidy. You just go in there and clean the place and keep it all. Well, that's the beginning part of your problem solving skills, developing it. You are in school and everybody's complaining how uh, the, the, the classroom is always very, very hot, you understand? Or there's no conducive environment or the classroom is not always conducive for learning. And on your own, you decide to come on a Saturday, take a broom to uh, take away all the cobwebs in the, in the classroom, and perhaps even if you have extra money, repaint the classroom and you know make the place look neat. You know you are, you are developing problem solving skills. At the initial stage of starting your problem solving skills, you probably will not be paid. Oh, you will not be paid. In fact, some people will be asking you, hey, you are just trying to show up. Some people will use uh, Nigerian colloquial pidgin language. I said, uh, now your papa team, you ITK, you want to show you I too know, you want to show yourself, eh? Hey? Don't allow such mediocre thinking to come up to come into your ears. Even if they say it, just drop it down and keep moving. And you, don't ever join the bandwagon of talking down people who on their own want to solve problems. Encourage them and learn from them because every business is designed to solve problems. So if you don't have problem solving skills as a habit, it will be difficult to even run a business. So problem, because I mean, every day that you will be waking up to meet these problems in your business, your job is to solve it. So before the power came on, you see me, I, I, I took a touch um, and then I was pointing at my face so that you could see my face. I could have as well just, you know, turn off the camera like I've done now. But I know that once I turn off the camera, your connectivity with me will not be as much as when you see my face. I wish I could see your face as well. That's why I said, um, I see a Bello says problem solving skills. Yes, please let me be seeing those comments, those feedbacks so that you're following. So problem solving skill is very important, is very critical to develop as an entrepreneur. And uh, let me take one more quickly before we go into starting a business. The, the fourth one is leadership skills. Leadership skill, you must learn to be a leader. You must learn to take leader, assume leadership, a leader. A leader is someone who, who rallies people together to show them the way and also lead them in the way to go. So a leader is someone who helps a group of people 
to carry out a collective action, take a collective state, step, steps rather, in order to achieve a collective vision or a collective goal with the interest of the individuals at, at heart. So as, as a leader, you must be interested in what is the goal of the community, what's the goal of the, of the, what's the vision, and how is that vision going to be beneficial to also the team players. So leadership is important because you are going to be working with people in the business space. Even if your business is only, maybe you do what a lot of young Gen Zs are doing today, you market your product on the internet, right? Maybe you market your product on Facebook, maybe you're into wig making, or perhaps you are into, you're a fashion designer, you make clothes, or perhaps you sell perfume or you sell books. And because you sell those stuff, you feel like, oh, I'm the only one running my business. So I don't need people. No, you need people because you are going to be connecting with um, people who are going to help you create adverts for your product on the internet. You are going to be working with people who are going to be supplying you the raw materials. You're going to be working with people who are going to perhaps help deliver your product when, you, when other people order for it, right? So your ability to connect and relate to these people in such a way that they all come together to make your business thrive is important. So let me just stop at those four. You know, so I, I'm, I don't have any notes around me. So that's what I teach naturally. So what's the first skill? Skill number one is sales and marketing skills. Learn to develop. No, see, the best marketers today were never great with marketing. They just decided that they were going to learn how to market. I repeat, the best marketers you see today were never good marketers. In fact, they were poor marketers. Let me, let me share a secret with you. If, um, would you like me to share a secret with you how you can become a super, super amazing marketer? I, I'm waiting for the comment section now. Yes, I'm waiting. Type it now. Would you like, if you, if you would love me to share with you a secret of how you can become an amazing marketer that markets your product and sell uh, tons of your products. Let me see the response on the comment section. Say, yes, I want to learn how to become a better marketer. Yes, I want to learn. Because I don't just want to mention these things to you. I want to also tell you how you can be able to achieve them within the possible time that we have on this call. So if you delay in responding, you miss the timing. Okay, so um, Ajoke, Ajoke says, yes, please. Yes, who else, is, who else wants to learn? And uh, Bello, Bello says, yes, awesome. Who else, who else, who else, who else, who else? If you waste time, we lose time. Don't waste time so we can, you know, get uh, to achieve the time allotted to us. I just want one more yes, and then we kick start. By the way, while I'm waiting, um, I have sold my book, Start Small Sellout. I've sold over 650 copies of my books, hard copies, um, made over 1.1 million naira cumulatively selling my products. So you could see that I have, I have, at least I have some things to share. I have also helped organizations increase their sales within a short possible time. Yes, of course, Mordecai is also displaying the book. He has a copy of it already. So you could see it there. Beautiful. Right. Great. So let me go ahead. Now, you can never shy away from marketing. Why do people run away from marketing? They don't want to be rejected. You don't want when you tell, after marketing, they will say no. You know, you hate no, right? You are scared, you are frustrated when all the effort to put in place, people are not buying. It's because you had a high expectation. You know, when expectation don't meet reality, the frustration sets in. So try as much as possible to lower your expectation, even though you believe that they will buy, and then, you know, push more effort. So how do you do that? Very simple. Every day, um, read 30 minutes every day on the book on marketing for every blessed day. In the next one year, in the next six months, your sales for your business will improve. There is no gimmicks about it. Every day, decide to read. In fact, take money, go to the bookshop, buy all the books you can see on marketing. Buy the 10 books on marketing. Next year, since last year, the only books I've been reading is books on money, marketing, entrepreneurship. Those are the three books I've been reading, three kinds of books I've been reading for the last two years. If you come to my library, those are the kind of books I'm buying because I want to improve my marketing. I want to get to a point where I could make 1.5 million naira sales in a week selling my product. But I cannot achieve that goal if I have the knowledge of selling 200,000 naira products. The knowledge that brought you to selling 200,000 naira worth of products is not the same knowledge that would help you achieve the 1.5 million naira sales. For you to achieve 1.5 million naira in sales, you have to now learn new things on marketing that has so quickly 
decide that every day you're going to spend 30 minutes every day to read about marketing. There are a lot of articles on the internet. There's YouTube, right? Just go on YouTube, pick every, pick a, every day, listen to marketing to, pro, um, courses every day. There are podcasts, amazing podcasts by marketers who have made millions in sales around the world, you know, and see how they are making it. I'll give you a quick example of Elon Musk. Elon Musk bought Twitter for how many billion? Let me see those who are current about business. If you know how much Elon Musk bought Twitter, type it on the comment section and let us know. Um, Mark Zuckerberg bought um, 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 bought WhatsApp for $19 billion. That was like five, seven years ago. Yeah. Now, when, Mark, when uh, Elon Musk bought Twitter, he wanted to monetize it back. Twitter has over 1 billion subscribers, right? If I'm not mistaken, 1 billion around the world. Now, before now, you need to be a celebrity. You need to have used Twitter for a long time to get a blue tick. But Elon Musk bought it and now said anybody can get a blue tick. You just have to pay $8 per month. So if 1% of 1 billion people that are on Twitter decide to pay $8 per month to buy, what's 1% 1, 1 of 1 billion? That's 100 million people. You know, a good $44 billion. Good. So let's take an instance. Um, um, Elon Musk decides to sell the blue tick um, icon for $8 per month. Let's say 100, 100 million subscribers around the world, which is still less than 10% or about 10% of 1 billion. They say, oh, let's not even go. Um, okay, let's stay around that. Right. So 100 million people around the world decide to buy that blue tick icon. That shows that your Twitter account has been verified for $8. Multiply $8 by 100 million users. That's how much? That's $800 million a month generated by Twitter. So therefore, in 10 months, Elon Musk would have made $8 billion alone from those who are subscribing on Twitter for the uh, verification icon. So if you multiply that, say, five years, the 44 billion he used in buying Twitter, he would have gotten it back, if, even if that's the only thing he sells. But remember, Twitter has sponsored ads. Twitter has a lot of ways of making money. So that's me just give you an example. So if you decide to read every day, there's no hide and fact. See, if you spend 30 minutes every day on a particular subject for five years, you will be known nationally in your country. If you spend another seven years, consistently reading on a particular subject for 30 minutes every day, you will be known internationally. That is a, a, that is a projection that has been proven again and again. I that is talking to you, a typical example of it, I'm known nationally today because I've spent seven years of my life on the path of entrepreneurship, over seven years to 10 years of my life on this same path. Every day I'm attending courses. I mean, Abuja today, I spent, um, I spent, well, to have a million to be in Abuja. They're not paying me. I attended the summit. I spent and I paid my way down here because the knowledge I get, you can't compare the knowledge I have from this summit with you that is in your house because and the network of people that I met. So you could see that. So the, one of the secrets is spend 30 minutes every day, read something on marketing, read something on sales, do read on research, go on YouTube, go on podcasts every day for 30 minutes. I promise you for the next three months, there will be a difference in your way of marketing and selling. So quickly, let's go to, because our time is really fast spent. Of course, you cannot learn this kind of thing in one hour, right? So what uh, Mordecai is trying to do, is just trying to ensure that he's for you up, he inspire you to uh, take curiosity and interest in entrepreneurship. Why do you need entrepreneurship? Before we go to starting, why do you need to be an entrepreneur? Why do you need to start a business? Number one, the reason why you need to start a business is because Nigeria is filled with so many problems. Nigeria is, is, is Nigeria has a begging problems to be solved. There is a problem of road. There is a problem of education. There is problem in agriculture. There is problem in telecommunication. There is problem in food. There is problem in power. You see the, the power, the light has been off and on. There is power. There is problem virtually everywhere, and these problems are begging for answers. If you could find the solution package it in form of a product and service to sell, people are willing to buy. For example, somebody decided that instead of us using charcoal to brush our teeth and toothpick, they decided to create McLean. And McLean toothpaste is being bought on a daily basis. We have over 120 million um, people in Nigeria, B. 
Let's say that one ten percent of those people brush their teeth every day, and so they buy toothpaste every month. Ten percent of one hundred twenty million is twelve million people. If twelve million people buy McLean of in naira, McLean of a hundred dollars of a hundred naira, right? That is hundred naira times twelve million. Somebody multiply that and let me see in the chat session so I don't make mistake my quotation. But if I'm not mistaken, that'll be like one hundred twenty million. Naira every month or 1.2 billion if I'm not mistaken every month. Just check it out to see. So there are always problems. Food, food will remain one of the constantly Nigerians, no matter whether people are dying, not just Nigeria, around the world, whether there is war, people need food to eat. People need clean water to drink. If you can provide clean water, people will buy. People need transportation. That's why today young people are driving boat and Uber and they are making as much as a quarter of a million naira every month generating it from just driving imagine if they create a system where they have three four five cars on the road doing same thing for them so there's a there's a business everywhere there's a problem in our educational sector um some people have some children have a challenge of coping with reading some people have some children are terrible struggling in reading and and reading if you are if you can take a course in helping children uh, pick up their reading skills easily. Okay, so Bo uh, Bello is reiterating what I'm saying. Thank you very much. So if you have, if, if you if you notice that some children are have a challenge with reading, if you can, if you're a teacher and you could just say go beyond just teaching in the classroom to so taking a skill, a course training on how to help children who struggle with reading know how to read early and on time. I promise you, there are going to be a lot of parents who will want you to. I want to pay you to teach their children how to read. There's a lot. So even as a teacher, you can start a class, specifically reading course. Public speaking, I'm communicating very well. I charge people for public speaking. Do you get my point? So there's a problem. There's a array of problem out there in Nigeria that is begging for entrepreneurs to solve it. Once you're able to solve it, you create a solution to it. Even though you have, you have a problem, sometimes you don't even have to be the person that is solving the problem. Just find the solution know who is selling the solution collect the solution and sell it to those who need it and you make money from it does that make sense please let me know if it's making sense so that's one of the reasons why number two reason why you should be an entrepreneur is because we have a teeming population of or a mag a mega a mega population in nigeria and perhaps in africa africa is estimated to be 1.3 billion people in population in africa nigeria alone is over 120 million people that is 120 million people that's a market that's a market so we have a population of people who needs right who needs um solutions number three is because why you need to start a business is because um of course we you know the expense in the exchange rate in the in the dollar in the in, in the exchange market so the things that people use to import if they can find such a quality in Nigeria that they don't have to import it, they will be willing to buy. So people are looking for alternative to buying things that they could have naturally imported. Now, how do you start? Number one way you start a business is by first, what identify a problem. Identify a problem or problems that you have faced as a person or problem that people face predominantly in a, a particular region, right? Identify a problem that you are faced with you are faced with and you've been able to um, overcome it. If you face that problem, it means some, some other people are facing it, right? I tell a story of a young man who in Port Harcourt who has been able to make big business and made millions of naira by generating power. So there's a computer village in Port Harcourt at Garrison. And those people don't have power. They literally have to use generator to power their businesses. And some of them are, they just have a small table where they fix phone repairs. They do phone repairs, but they need light for soldering, they need light for, you know, just petty, petty things. And that light they need, they can't afford to go and buy gen just for it. So this guy just decided to bring his generator, fuel his generator and connect some few shops to his generator and they pay him money for him to power their shop. That's how those individuals started getting life. From one generator, from a small generator to a bigger generator to a, a lister. And he's making good money because he has over Imagine 300 shops or 200 shops paying him 300 naira every day. So 300 naira times 300, that's how much? 
three times three is nine. That's like three hundred naira times hundred. That's uh thirty thousand naira, if I'm not mistaken. Thirty thousand naira times three. That's like ninety thousand naira. So every day, let's say he's making an average of a hundred thousand naira, Monday to Saturday. That's like six hundred thousand naira every day, half a million every week. So it's obviously making almost two million naira a month. Of course, so let's take away all the cost and other stuff. So you could see somebody who identify a simple problem in a market and is able to create a solution rather than join other people to complain about it. You see how someone starts by identifying a problem. So the first way to start a business is you identify what problem is existing, whether people love to eat amala. Maybe there's a community of Yoruba people in your state but they love amala, but they, they can't find amala to eat. They're only left with eating a goosey soup and they're not satisfied. You could go and look for a Yoruba person to come and you can start an amala joint. You don't cook amala, but you employ people that cook amala. And then you have it and you will see all the Yoruba people in that community. If they will, they will like to come and eat amala because it's like eating home food away from home, right? So um, you start, that's, that's an example. You cannot run a business if your business is not identifying, if it's not solving a problem. You can add a skill. So, so how do you now start? Uh, what I said, I identify the problem is the foundation. How do you now really start? Step number one, start with what you have. You can start with your skill. I have a skill, you know, you can, you can start with your skill. Maybe you are, you are into tech. You know, you can learn a skill and then turn that skill into a business. My younger brother is a web designer. He's a web developer. He, does, he develops websites and he charges people to develop websites for them. He's the one working on my website, kingslame.com. You know, the guy is making good money. You could develop, you could learn a skill of solar panel installation. You could learn a skill of um, CCTV camera installation. You could learn a skill of which other installation again, even multi-choice DSTV installation. So if you imagine if you learn how to install CCTV camera, panel, panel, uh, solar panel, and uh, perhaps DSTV, there's always going to be someone calling you to come and install one for them and you charge them. So you could start a business with your skill. You could start a business with your knowledge and your experience. I'm a business consultant today because of the knowledge I have had. I've worked in four different industries. I've worked in the, in the education industry as a teacher. I've worked in tour, tourism industry um, uh, uh, in a... In a as, as um, travels and tours company, I've worked in the food processing industry. I've worked in the fin financial sector in the in the in the financial institution, and all this experience, I gather them together, and I've been able to help businesses, individuals start their business by consulting for them, and I charge them and they pay. I've been able to turn my knowledge into a product. I've written a book. The book is selling at two thousand five hundred naira. Then on Amazon, is selling around uh, ten to fourteen dollars. You know, on Amazon. So that's me turning my knowledge into a business. So what knowledge do you have? You think that everybody know how to post on Facebook. You'll be shocked. A lot of people don't know how to post, post on Facebook. You'll be shocked. A lot of people don't know how to upload pictures on, on their Facebook status. You could do a simple training like that and charge people 1,000 Naira and teach them how to upload pictures on your WhatsApp status. And you will be shocked people that will pay to attend. So it might look like what you know is common, but there are a lot of people that don't know. What do you know that people don't know? You could create a training out of it. I am not a fan of people who learn how to do something and then now start teaching people how to do what they learn. When you learn a skill, it's expected that you first of all apply that skill, begin to implement it first before you go to teach. Not just learn, you learned about video editing. You have not started after learning it. You need to go and be teaching, you need to go and be you know, give out that video editing services. Let people criticize you. Let customers give you feedback. Let them review. After you have gotten a good number of clients, then you can now start teaching people how to also be video animator. Don't just start copywriting class. After you finish copywriting class, you are now running a copywriting school. No. How many copies have you written? How has it converted and made people buy? That's to show your depth of knowledge before you do that. So, so knowledge is one of the ways you can start. Your experience is one of the ways you can start. Your skill is one of the ways you can start. Which other way can you start? Um, you can start as an apprentice. I usually tell people the best thing to do, decide what you want in life. If you want to be a film, if you want to be into music, just go and work in a music studio. Work in a music studio, they will pay you, you will learn more. You want to become a music producer or you study music in school. 
as an academy, uh, academically. Don't end in there. After you, kept, you come out of school, go to a studio and work so that what you learned in your university, be able to implement it in the studio. That way you gather the experience. Maybe your dream is to own a hotel. Don't just dream about it. Go and get a job in a hotel. Look for a hotel and work. Work from the cleaner, from being a cleaner to becoming a portal or what they call room service. And then from there to becoming a supervisor, you will gather the experience. And pretty soon, you'll be able to generate enough money to start your own. What the beauty of doing that is that you will be paid, right? You will be paid while you are learning. So I want to, I want to be a chef. My goal is to be a chef. And I went to a catering school, at least for three months. And then I went into, um, I went to a hotel. The hotel is paying me and they are teaching me because there are certain things you will never learn until you get on the job. That's it. So um, which other way? So, okay, so let me go. So growing your business, how do you grow your business? Or um, grow your business by increasing, giving quality. Okay. Um, Brian Tracy said quality service is not enough. But of course, quality is important. Quality is important, but identify who your, who your target audience is. Who are your target audience that you want to sell to? Who are your target audience? Not everybody is your customer. Know that and know peace. Not everybody is your customer. If you're selling orange, not everybody is your customer. Because even people that eat orange, not everybody will eat your orange. Some people will prefer uh, mama yabo. If you sell bole, so not everybody will eat your bole. If you say goosey soup and uh, afang soup, not everybody will eat your afang soup. Some people don't just like your place. They don't like your business situation. If you're selling mama put, stop marketing to people who are going to be people who, who like to eat at Genesis or or we are again or maybe uh, Chicken Republic because everybody has is they have a taste for the one. So understand your market and grow from there. If you can understand the market, then you can grow your business. I'm just trying to summarize it. And I hope this is really making sense for you, right? Please let me know in the comment section. I'm not seeing the MOG fire if you're getting um, practical tips on growing your business. So the next tip in growing your business is knowledge. I said number one thing to know a uh, way to grow your business is understand your market. You cannot take that away. Whether you do fasting and prayer, if you like fast for until tomorrow in your mosque or in your church, let your pastor pour anointing on you. If you don't understand your market, forget it. The miracle will be there, but you are not cashing out on the miracle. So understand your market, understand who are the customers. Not everybody is your customer, I repeat that. Who exactly are your customers? Some people won't buy from you, not because you don't sell good product, but because your product is too cheap. They just feel like because it's cheap, to them it's cheap. Maybe you're selling a product at 5,000 naira. to them is they buy same thing for 50,000. So if you're selling for 5,000, they will see it as inferior. Stop struggling to sell to those people. And don't raise your price because of them, except these are the market people you're targeting. Look for the people who 5,000 Naira is ideal for them and sell to them. So understand who your customers are. Understand how, what they want. I've written a lot of that in my book, Start Small Sellouts. You want to get a copy of it now on a discount. You could get it now on a discount. Just um, my number will be displayed on the screen. You could connect with me or you go to kingslimit.com. You could order it online, you know, here and you get it. So um, that's the I say understand the market. That's great. Number two your knowledge about your business. It is, it is dangerous for you to be in a business where you have never invested in growing in your business. Like you don't pay for courses. Um, if if uh, Mordecai had put this training now for a fee, you probably would, you would not come. If they say pay 5,000 Naira to attend now, you will run away. You are looking for free. I always say in my quote, free is good, but free won't take you far. Free is good, but free things will take you far. Yes, you are get free. Uh, you, can, you can imagine the way I'm sharing what I'm sharing now. I'm, I'm sharing at the free level. When you pay 200,000 naira for my coaching or consulting session, I, I will go deeper. I will analyze your business and we'll take you further, right? So learn to invest in knowledge in relation with your business. Uh, simple things you can do to grow your knowledge in your business. Subscribe to your, to your, to your industry journal. What are you into? Are you an architect? There are in the globally, there's an industry journal. Subscribe to it, pay for it. Are you a speaker? Subscribe to Speaker Magazine because in those industry journal, you'll be getting update of the latest, um, the latest version of the business that you are running. All right. So what's the next one again? Um, in, in the sharing tips in growing your business. 
What's the next tip in gaining growing your business? Uh, ta, 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 ta. Um, customers, you need to in ouch, sales and customers, you must increase, you must learn to increase sales, all right? So I think our time is really fast spent. I need to stay within the hour so I can begin to round up. And in case there's one or two questions, I'd love to take. I just hope that all the things I've shared, I've just shared them from my head. You know, I've been just been talking. <laughs> so you should be able to pick a thing or two there and and get and get it. Thank you very much, Teams on Purpose TV. Start small sell out plus two three four six zero eight zero six so that people who are not Nigerians can be able. That's a WhatsApp number, by the way. Just drop me a WhatsApp on my DM or send me a DM on my Facebook and my Instagram and my LinkedIn and then we'll talk. All right, so I hope I've been able to share a few tips as it relates to entrepreneurship tonight. And thank you guys for having me. I really appreciate it. Wow. All right, so I don't know if you uh, can hear you, Mordecai. I think the network is just uh, acting up. The network like, likes one person to talk. I don't know why. <laughs> I can't hear you, Mother Kaya. I don't know if you can hear me. Hello. Hello, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? All right, so let me just round up. Um, I really wish that the network would have favored us so we could have a few more conversations. But mm -hmm. all right, so guys, um, so, okay, let's do it like this. If you have a question, quickly drop it on the comment section. Mordecai, I don't come up yet, just stay there. If you have a question, please drop it on the comment section so that it will be displayed and I can quickly answer it. Um, I know I've said, I've said a lot of things or, or you can as well, if you have any question, what are the three things you start doing from the things I've said now? Maybe one or two, three things that I said that you have you have you caught and you will begin to implement them, you begin to apply them. I want to know in the comment section. Um, those, the person moderating, please once the once the, once the comment drops, quickly display it so we can see it. I can read it. If you have a question, please do that. It's nine o'clock already, so I just have five minutes more. And then I'm going to disappear from your face. <laughs> if you're watching the replay, thank you for watching the replay till the end. All right. So I appreciate that. I appreciate that. So do we have any question? Do we have any question? Do we have any question? Do we, did we learn anything? I'd love to know what you learned. I'd love to see your question. I'm just waiting. I'm just waiting. I'm just waiting. I don't have to stay till five minutes though. So if I don't have any question, I think the Kaya will just take over from here and I will say adios until I see you again. Don't forget to connect with me on Facebook at Kingsley Ime, on Instagram at Real Kingsley Ime, R E A L K I N G S L E Y I N E at Real Kingsley Ime. On Twitter is the same, is the same. Instagram and Twitter is the same at Real Kings Lime, R E A, small letters all through, R E A L K I N G S L E Y I N E, at Real Kings Lime, you know, one word on Instagram and on Twitter. On Facebook and on LinkedIn is the same name you're seeing that is on the display, the way it's been spelled here, Kings Lime. On Facebook, send me a friend request or follow me rather because my, my stuff is full. Just follow me there. And then you see amazing content to learn from. Same on Instagram, same on LinkedIn. Let's connect, let's follow each other. I really love to connect with you. I just hope this is not a network issue, but I just want to say thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone. I think my time is up now. Mordecaiya, please, over to you. And once you come up, I would have to leave so that maybe the network will flow well. And then later we can talk. Thank you, thank you, moderator. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you.
are we done are we done so i can just wrap this up thank you everyone it's been quite quite a beautiful experience it's been quite a beautiful experience talking with you guys i know you guys can see me but i can't see you but in my eyes i think i'm seeing you somewhere <laughs> I think I'll see you in the inner part of my eyes. I am seeing you. <laughs> all right, all right. All right, so. Uh, okay, Mordecai, please, can you hear me? Can somebody send me a message that I'm done, like I'm really done now? I'm really done. Uh, I'm really done. I'm really done. Yep. I'm done. Okay. Okay. Mordecai says the system went off. Okay. He was using his system. He said the system went off. Okay. So I'm, I'm hoping that, let me ask him. So if I end the if I end it now, I hope that it's going to save on, I hope it's going to save so that there could be a, a replay, but if not, it's um, unfortunate. Okay, so I, I'm sure you guys have dropped questions right now or comments, but since we're using StreamYard, uh, I really cannot see the question because I am not, oh, I'm seeing now, all right. Okay, so. Um, Bella says insightful. Bella has been very active here. Okay. All right. So let me read, read, read. I'm seeing the comments now. Okay. I guess that's it for tonight. All right. Appreciate everyone. Thank you. Have a beautiful night. Rest and have a blessed week ahead of you. Bye bye. Ciao. And I hope Okay, uh very sorry for the big transmission. Uh I had a uh a glitch here. So uh Abisola, can you hear me Abisola? Okay, good evening everyone. Thanks so much, uh Mr. Kisley for the awesome session. Sorry, very sorry for going off. Uh, I had issue with my my system, so I had to just uh, restart. So please do well to get a copy of his book, Start Small, Sell Out. It's a very powerful book. And uh, I went to it, I read it some, uh, about two months ago or a month ago, and I learned so much from it. So do well to check it out. Get, I'll, I'll drop his WhatsApp number on the group so you can check out the group uh, and get and get uh, a copy of the book, okay? It's very, it's a very great book and you learn so much from it. Start small, sell out. So uh, yet it comes to an end, uh, the four day skill upgrade program. I'm sure we've all learned something in the last uh, four days. We've all learned something. The first day we started with life skills. Uh, then uh, the second day we went on to learn about leadership skills. The third day we learned about uh, digital skills. And today we learned about entrepreneurship, uh, entrepreneurship skills. And Mr. Kingsley Imed uh, led us through the journey of how to start a business and how to like grow her business too. Uh, for those who are who will be watching the replay, do well to drop a comment. Let me know what you gain and learn from uh, uh, tonight's session. And beyond the knowledge you've learned, make sure you find a way to apply it. And one of the ways to learn more about it is just try and get a copy of his book. I'm sure it's going to greatly help you. Thank you all for joining. Once again, uh, this four day skill upgrade program was brought to you by Teens on Purpose uh, International. And our vision is to raise purpose driven leaders who will become agents of positive change. We know there are problems around the world and we believe that rather than complaining about the problems, we can start contributing meaningfully to solving those problems. And I'm sure the knowledge you've gained over the 
uh, last four days is sure going to help you in doing so. Uh, so uh, thank you all for joining again. And uh, we look towards uh, this uh, skill of the 3.0, which we will be holding next year. It's going to be great too. So thank you all. Uh, do well to go through uh, each videos that uh, each we place. I'm sure you will learn a lot from it. And that's all. My name is Modikai Orimiladie. And uh, see you next time. Take care. Bye-bye.